We have a number of people here for the uh, flooding based warrant articles. May I suggest we do the flooding warrant articles first? Okay. Um, I have those already identified if you wish me to make the motions on those. All right, Tim. Um, but could the people that are here for the flooding from. Oh, there's a whole bunch. <laughs> and let me, let me just ask you are some of you. Um, residents, year-round residents, or some of you from like out of town, perhaps? Okay, so, um, okay, in Massachusetts, perhaps? Taxpayers. Have, okay, <laughs> but, but tax, taxpayers, they probably, they probably have to go to work tomorrow morning, yeah. correct? So for that reason, I think that it's a good idea um, to do what Tim recommended, which was, Tim? To uh, deal with the flood-related warrant articles first and bring closure to them uh, so that they may relax. Okay. Uh, and I'll be dealing with articles 20, 22 and 42. Okay. The um, flooding issues. I would, I, would point out, I would point out to everyone that uh, you know, this, this is a budget committee's public hearing and we're here primarily to listen to you guys tell us why we're wrong and give us an opportunity, based on your wisdom, to change our position. So if you already agree with our position, you may not need to, or may not find a need to speak. But certainly, if someone is speaking against your position, you may want to take the opportunity to rebut it. Okay, so with that, uh, I would move to public hearing Article 20, uh, $100,000, to hire a consulting engineering firm uh, to study the uh, flooding at uh, Hampton River, Hampton Harbor, and alongside Wayside Streets, uh, recommended by the Board of Selectmen, 5 zip, recommended by the Budget Committee, 9 zip. And I'm sure that Jenny is ready to second. Second. Okay, Barbara, did you get that? Chief, moved, by, moved by Tim, Article 20, seconded by Jenny. And I also just want to mention that I received a number of emails from perhaps you people and um, in making your case <coughs> for the budget committee to please support the Warren articles. And just so that for the record that you can see, or maybe you didn't pick up the, the paperwork that was over on the table, you have the Warren articles. We are unanimous in supporting this, okay? The, the selectmen are unanimous in supporting this. Flooding is a very big issue that needs to come to the front front of the, the front of uh, the, the, uh, the stove, and we have to... Mr. Chairman, can we hear from the public? <clears throat> I'm just explaining a little bit, Tim. So, having said that, we have a motion by Tim, seconded by Ginny. Any comments, questions from the public? And if you'd like to come up, you can speak at that podium. Yes. I mean, I have something to say, but I can, I'm, if you're in agreement, I guess you want me to say anything. Okay. No, no, I'm just suggesting that there's no detail. Right. Everyone podium. is well, everyone's welcome to speak. So it's west side of Ashland Avenue. Okay. Now, could you please identify yourself? Hello. Can you hear me? Okay, yeah. Yeah. Could you identify yourself with an address and sign a piece of paper for our secretary, Barbara, because you know, the, all these names, she yep. has to try to write them down and keep them in the minutes properly. So thank you very much. Barbara, is that going to work for you? Okay, good. Hi, my name is Greg Pratt, and my wife Cindy is here as well. As well. Uh, we live at, well, we have a home at 60 Hobson. Uh, we pay taxes, but we don't vote in this community. And we're here representing a group that lives in the Brown Ave, Hobson Ave, Manchester Street area, basically the whole area west of Ashworth Ave, property abutting the marsh. We're here to ask you to support the study of the study of town flooding issues and the King's Highway drainage warrant articles. As we all know, sea levels rise with will displace coastal populations, threaten infrastructure, and eventually the loss of property. Much of the current flooding is done in areas where people have second homes or vacation homes. So why would the people of Hampton really care if our second homes are lost to the sea? And these are people who already, most of them already have homes, so it's really not a big deal to them, I'm thinking, some of these people might think. 
We already have a place to live, so why should the taxpayers help save our property? And I can understand that argument until you look at the consequences. Uh, my wife and I live in New Hampshire, so we're paying property taxes on two homes. Our property taxes are high enough, and we don't want to spend any more money in taxes than we have to. But these second homes bring in a lot of tax dollars to the town of Hampton. Most of them don't send children to your schools. And six months out of the year, they just sit there paying three, four, five hundred dollars a month to the town and use zero services from the town during that time period. In fact, Hobson Ave has 26 homes, which contributed about $120,000, I estimated, to tax base per year, not counting the hotelty on the street. If you include Hamps, Hobson Ave, Manchester Street, Brown Ave area, you're talking it's up $750,000 a year of tax money coming in. And that's just a small area of the flood that we're talking about. When we talk about the other areas, um, we could be talking about millions of dollars. Um, as the sea level rise, unless we do something, I know we're not going to make any improvements to our home that we have here in Hampton, which we want to do, which means no extra money for the town of Hampton. I think there's others that feel the same way. And as sea level rise and continue to rise, our properties may even start to decrease, and we may be entitled to tax abatements at some point, causing Ham Hampton residents to pay even more in property taxes. And can you imagine the impact on taxpayers in Hampton, if these properties lose 10, 20, 30 percent or more in their value, in fact, it's possible in the very near future some of these vacation homes could be relatively worthless. And that's something we as property owners and you as taxpayers don't want to happen. I just think we contribute a lot of money to the towns. We want to, I want to contribute more. I actually want my property to go up in value because I'll be making money on my property and we want to make improvements to it. So it's the best interest of all of us to not have these homes, you know, go down in value and to, to flood. So in the best interest of the flooding regular in the best interest of the areas that flood regularly, and the town of Hampton taxpayers, we ask you here to, we ask you to support the town of Hampton flooding issues and the King's Highway Drainage Warrant Articles so we can all help solve this problem together. I think we're all in this together and that's what we're looking for. So I'm trying to get the angle that you we're all in this together. You know what I mean? And I just want to make a point that you know, as I said, you know, the taxpayers, we don't want to pay any extra money and stuff like that, but you've got to kind of look at the big picture for all of us, and that's what I'm trying to get at. That's something in for all of us, not just for uh, the beach residents that are flooded. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Any other? Good evening. Uh, Norman Sobodick, 70 Tide Mill Road, um, representing the rational taxpayers of Hampton. Um, we're not really opposed to this uh, article, but we are opposed to the concept of funding it from the undesignated fund balance. It's uh, really uh, a way of skirting and avoiding going to the voters and saying there's no tax impact, when in fact there really is a tax impact. Uh, there's nothing wrong with the merit of the, of the article. The flooding is a serious issue. It needs to be addressed. But it should be treated like any other Warren article. Come in front of the voters. The voters can vote on it. There is a tax impact to $100,000. And the concept of using undesignated fund balances is a, is a way of putting any and all kinds of projects that you don't want to have the voters vote on and trying to convince them there's no tax impact is misleading and disingenuous. And I don't think it's the proper way to go about doing business. In the past, the undesignated fund balance has been created by over budgeting. So it always creates a surplus and the town is supposed to maintain a surplus and not run into a deficit. And over the past few years, a portion of the surplus has been returned to the voters in the form of a abatement against the increases in the normal taxes that have uh, ta the ca tax spending that's in the current budget. <coughs> but to start line item items and uh, saying let's use the money for this particular project or that particular project to me is a wrong process. That's my only point. Thank you. Mary Louise Woolsey, 148 Little River Road. I agree with Norman, but I'll talk quicker. Um, I, I don't like the idea of the un uh, unassigned fund balance being used for things like this. No prejudice against this particular need, but I hope that people stop submitting articles that are tapping the unassigned fund balance. Uh, I don't think it's a problem for you at all. Uh, just asking the public to raise and appropriate. So I support what you're trying to do. I just have a little problem that unassigned fund balance stuff, you're dipping your hands in the fund balance, is uh, starting to get too uh, frequent. But good luck with it. I don't know whether anyone on the budget committee might want to um, change 
uh, or amend the wording in there, saying just you know raise and appropriate. Mr. Chairman. Yes, Mr. Jones. Uh, just to note that we have no authority to change the wording in any of these warrant articles. Thank you. I can't hear what they're saying. I don't, you know, I don't know if you'd be open to that, but it might make it a little more uh, vote-worthy uh, when the public goes into the ballot box. Hi, my name is Becca Bassett, and my family owns a home at 12 Jinshin Road. We're in the Meadow Pond area, and I'm here representing the, the neighborhood and residents of that area. Um, I, I uh, understand the concern um, of using uh, funds without a vote, but what I think is really important to remember is that this is a severe and urgent problem um, that has been going on for years. Uh, Ten years ago, when I was moving out of my college dorm, my mom picked me up and helped me move my stuff back uh, here to Hampton and we literally couldn't get down the road. We had to get a motel room and a storage container to deal with all this stuff. So um, it's, it comes up on a whim when the rains are hard or the tides are high and we literally can't get into our homes. Um, so uh, we're here to really encourage you to support the, the two articles, uh, to do so using this fund balance, uh, to not have further delay in finding a short-term and long-term solution. Um, and, and really urge you to, to go ahead and continue to support these articles. Thank you very much. Anybody else wish to speak on Article 20? Seeing none. Mr. Chairman, I move that we close the hearing on Article 20. Seconded by, Second. by Ginny Brattle. All those in favor, raise your hand. Unanimous. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, if I might move to public hearing, Article 22, the sum of $80,000 to conduct an investigation and preliminary design for stormwater drainage for the Kings Highway, recommended by the Board of Selectmen and the Budget Committee unanimously. Seconded, moved by Tim Jones, seconded by Regina and Barbara. Note that the uh, on Article 20, Sonny abstained. Everybody else voted. Can, can I just uh, Jones move the motion? Regina seconded it. Yeah, on the prior. On the prior. Okay. <coughs> Thank you. Any discussion from the public regarding Article 22? Seeing none. Mr. Chairman, I'll move to close <coughs> the public hearing on Article 22. Second. Seconded by Ginny. Moved by uh, Tim Jones, seconded by Ginny. All those in favor, please raise your hands. It's hard for me to see everybody here. Uh, it's everybody unanimous. 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 Thank you very no. much. No. Wait a minute. Hold Wait on. on Did you One. say no? Okay. The no. nays. The nays, please Nay. raise. Okay, Brian Lapham is nay. Everybody else, Barbara was a yes. Okay, and there are no abstentions. Thank you. Mr. Chairman. Yes. I may move Article 42 to public hearing, 42. raise $100,000. 42. That's the, uh, the grist mill? Yeah, to continue throwing money at the grist mill dam. And that's uh, in, in your... In your <coughs> You're grouping that in with flooding. Um, because it was presented to us as a flood control issue at our last public, okay. uh, at our last budget committee meeting. Okay, that's. And that the, my motion will include that the article be considered read as written. And I would note that the Board of Selectmen voted, with only three members present, unanimously to, to recommend this. And the budget committee voted to recommend it 8 1 1. Okay. Second. Okay, so made motion made by Tim and it was seconded by Ginny. Yes. Okay. Um, anybody from the public wish to speak on this? Uh, what, what is the number of that? Forty-two. Forty-two. Article forty-two. Article forty-two. Okay. My name is Norman Hurley, uh, four seventy-two High Street. I am a resident. <laughs> Um, I'm here to uh, ask for your support of Article 42, 
It's been an ongoing situation, though I don't necessarily believe it was presented as a flood uh, saving um, petition warrant last time. It was actually presented to help uh, save the Grismal building and dam uh, and, re and uh, rebuild it instead of uh, remove it. It does have benefits on flooding, and I will admit to that. We was presented last time that it may help with the, with the benefits of flooding, um, as we discussed last time. The uh, additional $100,000 is needed to complete the project. The project was originally uh, set up uh, and, and brought forth uh, back in 2014. Um, Actually, the, the original designs were done in 2012, and that's where the, all the money was uh, actually set, set up for five different things that could have happened to that project. Uh, on 2014, they voted to, to remove the uh, dam. In 2015, we petitioned to have the dam rebuilt instead of removed, and we put the money in that was uh, stated in 2012. Up to this point, uh, the town has gone forth uh, with engineers that have gone much more extensive on the, um, on the planning end of it and the design end of it. Those designs and the plans are completed. The, all the uh, cores were done this time. Uh, the funding that is needed now is to complete the project. The, the plan was actually put out to bid, and the bids were opened on December, I believe, 1st, if I'm not correct. Uh, I believe it was December 1st. And the final monies were uh, set aside. We were contacted again. We've been working along with them all along. We are contacted again. They suggested that we put in a petition warrant article to complete the project. Uh, the state in 2012 had told the town that they are required to either remove or rebuild the dam or face substantial fines from the Department of Environmental Services in the state of New Hampshire. Uh, again, there was a, a host of things that happened between now and then. The funding was put forth in 2015, town meeting, Article 38, and uh, subsequently after all the planning, designing, and engineering, and bidding, it came in at, in today's money at approximately $100,000 more. So we're asking you to support uh, finishing the project. It is still the town's responsibility to do something at the dam. Uh, it was very well shown to us that regardless if they had taken the dam down, or rebuilt it, that the ex, uh, increased cost would have still been there for doing either project because the amount of work that was not done in the first bid or the first planning stages, the core work, uh, the cores of the uh, sediments and all that was not done until the project had moved forward. So we're asking you to support it. Um, I'm more than happy to answer any questions. Any questions from this committee? Seeing none. Thank you, Norm. One second. Once again, we're we're doing the unassigned general fund balance as a way to tap uh, money to do these things. This has been dragging on since 2013 when the Stevens report was produced. Uh, 2014, uh, the Stevens report goes to 2013. Article 15 in 2014 wanted $400,000 to decommission the dam because of the Department of Environmental Services letter of deficiency. And that had a 331.18 lapse date. In 2015, Article 38 uh, asked to rescind the 400,000 and appropriate 650,000 with 400,000 from the fund balance once again. Uh, and uh, then Article 20 in 2016, uh, raising to raise money for the outfall culvert, uh, failed. We've got to get off the dime and do something about this. We've shifted from uh, replacing the dam, decommissioning the dam, doing a culvert, don't do a culvert. That's a heavily traveled area. We've got to do 
something about it. But I hope that if, if this passes, I hope it's definitive and somebody really, truly gets around to getting the project done. Norman Silberdick again speaking for Rational Taxpayers. This project, we've been opposed to it for quite a while, and now it's the uh, additional cost to complete is uh, being uh, used again via the uh, undesignated fund balance, which we're totally opposed to. This is the third article, and I'm surprised there aren't more. We might as well put every money article through the undesignated fund balance. It's a bad precedent. If this p doesn't pass, which I don't know what will happen, but we're not going to recommend it. Perhaps the, uh, the proponents of it might consider a GoFundMe page since they're the ones who are going to benefit the most from it. Good evening. Uh, Chris Jacobs, uh, Director of Public Works for the Town of Hampton. Um, the department's been actively um, working with the People, there's a five-member committee for the Mill Pond Dam uh, restoration. Uh, we have been working with the state diligently. Um, this, the project, uh, Norm Hurley was correct. Uh, this project has been put out to bid. The bids came in November, uh, December 1st. We received more than three, which is historic for, for a number of the projects that we put out. Um, we've got a, what I would consider a good contractor, a decent and fair price through the bid process. I'm concerned that if it doesn't get voted affirmatively, that for one, we'll lose the, well, all the money that was spent on the preliminary engineering report. We'll lose all the money that we've invested, well over 100000 now for the final design and the permitting and the bidding process. And um, we'll actually take a step backwards. We're very close to seeing this project done and completed. It will provide, while not a tremendous amount, but it will provide some stormwater management and help out the people in the, the Meadow Pond neighborhood, i.e. those adjacent to Kings Highway, Green, Jensen Streets. So it is a valuable project. It's a worthwhile project to get involved with and support. Uh, in the end, um, I think you're going to be very pleased with uh, the construction when it gets done, the aesthetics that you can see from High Street, the, uh, the natural uh, facade of the dam will remain. The new dam is going to be built behind it, and uh, it will be a very pleasant area. Uh, it's still going to be the responsibility of the town to uh, own and maintain, and uh, I, don't, I haven't had anything to the contrary telling me that it won't be open uh, as it currently is to public access. So it's, it's a well and valued uh, project and uh, I would urge you to support it and uh, to so that we can wrap this up and get something done. Thank you. May I ask Chris a question? Yes, you may. That's what this is a public hearing for. I, as a 54-year resident of Hampton, I'm, I'm not just talking about the gristmill dam by itself. That culvert has got to be replaced, enlarged, improved, or something. Is that going to be factored in? No. <gasps> Chris. The current dam, flow through the dam won't dramatically increase, but it won't dramatically decrease. Uh, the um, town spoke before uh, when it came to uh, adding another section to the project, i.e. coming out to High Street and replacing the culverts, um, was deemed in a prior vote not necessary at that time. Again, um, I'm always fearful for projects snowballing, like while we're replacing the dam, let's rebuild High Street, let's dredge Meadow Pond, let's resurface Route 1A, you know, things keeping going. This is a defined project, has defined benefits. Um, let's vote it in, let's get it done. Uh, in future years, we can prioritize the High Street culverts and uh, get that work done uh, at another time, another project. But it, probably it would be best to do the High Street culverts after we know what the solution is to the green uh, Kings Highway, Jensen neighborhood uh, drainage issues. So all projects in, in, a, in a good orderly fashion, one uh, building on top of another. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, if I may ask a question. Chris. Yes. Uh, Chris, you said you had bids? Yes, we do. We have, we have three bids, and the bidders have all agreed to uh, hold their bids as uh, 
open or, or uh, stable bids until the, I think it's the several days after the town election, town vote. And does that mean that you don't know what the dollar amount is on? The oh, board? I do, but not off the top of my head. It's not one piece of. It's not the piece of information I, that I brought with me tonight. Are they all under the requested hundred thousand? Are there? Well, we have five hundred and thirty-five remaining in that account, I believe, and you're asking for another hundred thousand. That makes it uh, six hundred and thirty-five thousand. So, are they all coming under six hundred and thirty-five thousand? No, there was one bid that that came in, um, taking their bid with the money that was remaining, left us somewhere around seventy-five, eighty thousand short. Uh, in discussing it with the engineers, they suggested that we add in more inspection time and more monitoring time because of the way the bid came in. And also, we the the project is out. Um, Jennifer could enlighten me as to whether all the permits are back, but I know it's through the wetlands bureau process. It's all been submitted, it's all been, submitted been reviewed and questioned once. So, so, yeah, at this moment in time, I don't even have a wetlands permit to do the work. And so what I'm hearing, I heard that word short. Short? Yeah, I heard you say short. Short of not enough money still. Correct. At $100, so the low bid and, with and the money that's remaining, we are short. And there. And I asked you whether or not the bids came in under 635000 And you said, no, one of them was short. Let me be clear. Okay. 635, 219,000 of that was spent on engineering or will be spent on engineering well, on this particular you go, project. You go further, let me so make that only point. leaves 400 some. No, so no, if no, 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 Chris. We have, we have appropriated first 400,000, then 250,000, and now you want another 100,000. That's a total of 750,000. I asked Christy at the last public hearing how much is remaining in the account based on the 650 we've already appropriated. Her response was, we have 535,000 remaining. So with that 535 and you add another 100,000, that gives you 635. And you're telling me the bid, you have bids that are not coming in below that. Is that correct? I don't have the information, so I'm not going to answer right. your question because it'll just go round and round. That's fine. Now, you also mentioned, <laughs> you also mentioned engineering uh, studies that you had. And uh, we don't see those engineering studies. Yeah. Right, because you see, this is all just one big black money hole. We cannot get straight answers in terms of what, what, when it's going to get done, how much it's going to cost. Where's the engineering studies? All right, just walk away. Okay. We have walk away. Time. That's fine. I have no problem with that. Is there anyone else that wants to speak from the public? Otherwise, I'd like to close this warrant article. And, and get this nightmare over with. Please, Norm, if you would. I, I would like to readdress a little bit of what he just said. Say, the hundred thousand dollars will be more than sufficient to finish the project with the money we currently have and currently have spent. Hey, the engineering projects are, done, are, are, are the engineering stuff is all done. Hey, uh, we've met with them. We've been working with them. We've been working with the DPW. We're working with. I believe it's PARE uh, Engineering, who's put out the project to bid. There were eight actual bids that came back. Several were well above the money we would be able to if, if we asked for this extra 100000 I believe at least two were under the money that would be needed if we asked for this extra 100000 So what we're asking to do is finish the project, spend the $100,000 to finish the project, or you lose the money that was already spent, because that money will lapse, and we'll have to still finish the project because the state still mandates to get the project done. The state is the one who's mandated that we do something to begin with. And you'll have to, it, the money, the question from Mr. Silverdeck about the $400,000 that came from, from the uh, fund balance was the 400000 that was originally raised the year before. So we took that, recaptured it, and then raised an additional two hundred and fifty thousand dollars. We made that very clear in the Warren article so that we weren't hiding a thing. We're trying to make sure everybody's aware of what we're doing. We're trying to make sure everybody's aware of what we're doing now as well. Okay, thank you very much. Um, and I think that Norman answered your question, Tim. Two of the bids came in under, so there is enough money. Mr. Chairman. 
Yes, sir. The question was directed to the DBW director, an, an official in this town, the one that's going to be supervising the work. And he told you he didn't have And he that, walked away. He didn't have, he told you he didn't no, have No, he didn't have the numbers regarding the dollar numbers. When I asked about the engineering study, he just walked away. That's an entirely different matter entirely. So, no, my questions have not been answered. And as far as Mr. Hurley, I love Norm Hurley. He and I enjoy each other's company immensely. Do we not, Norm? However, I will point out that, you know, a few years ago when he came in asking for an additional $250,000 in addition to capturing the so-called lapsed money from the $400,000 warrant article, he was assuring us that there would be more than enough to repair the dam because there are a number of options to do the repair that would come under less than that. And so here we are. Now, okay, Tim, Tim, please. Norm's, Tim. Norm's estimates, I can't. Tim, Excuse Tim, me, Mr. Chairman. We have another person that wishes to speak from the public. You, you reminded me before that this isn't about us talking. During this public hearing, we're here to listen to the people. I agree. I was responding to Chris you, Mr. Has Chairman. Point, all right. Chris has returned to the microphone. Okay. Will he, will he now identify himself as a non-citizen? Chris, if you would, please. Chris Jacobs, Director of Public Works of the Town of Hampton. The three bids that we received uh, are as follows. RC and D Inc. was the low bidder, $496,815. The second lowest bid was from Ken Reed's Kenny Fick Corporation, 537875, no cents. Uh, and then reading further down, Sumco. Eco contracting bid 517614 um, total. There were one, two, three, four, five other bids, um, all substantially higher. Thank you. Thank you very much. And the engineering study I asked about? Can I make a motion to close the discussion of this article? We have a motion to I close. Second it. Seconded by Regina. All those in favor of closing this discussion, raise your hands. We have <coughs> we have Ginny and we it's have. It's unanimous down here. It's unanimous. It's unanimous. And it's unanimous up there as well. Thank Mr. You Chairman, much. if I, I would like to make a motion to reconsider my vote uh, on Article 42. Can I get a second, please? Second. I second. Thank you. Okay, we, we have a motion to reconsider, Barbara, by Tim Jones. He wants to reconsider his vote, seconded by Ginny. Um, the discussion right now will be restricted to whether we are going to, um, we have the motion, restrict the conversation to um, reconsideration, not the article itself. Okay. Relax. We closed the public hearing. Relax. No, we know what we're I doing. Mr. Chairman, we no longer in public hearing, correct? We are going to recess out of the public hearing at 949 in order to discuss this as the budget committee. Eight, 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 forty-nine. Eight, forty-nine. Oh, I'm sorry. Seven. I'm sorry. Seven forty-nine. Okay, I'm looking right at my. At the because clock we want here. we want to bring closure on all of the flood-related warrant articles, as we said earlier. Okay. Yes, we can. We I can I can do that, right. and I'm and doing it right now. So we are going to close the recess, not close recess, the public hearing. And then we are going to discuss these three uh, flood issues if anybody wishes to reconsider their votes so that we can conclude completely on these three articles so that this group of people that came here special for this from out of town will be able to go home. After we do that, we will go back to the public hearing and we will continue on with the rest of the Warren Articles. So, <laughs> okay, we have, uh, Sonny wants to move the question. So those in favor of reconsidering, which, what was your motion again, Tim? I move to allow me to change my vote on Article 42. Okay. A motion to reconsider. And and Sonny, uh, and who, who seconded that? Ginny. Ginny seconded it. Sonny just moved to vote. So those in favor of 
reconsideration, please raise your hands. Ginny Bridal. Mr. Kravis moved that we, we take the, the vote. Okay, we don't need a second on that because it's not a motion, it's just asking to, to move it. So, those in favor of reconsidering the Article 42, please raise your hands. We have Ginny and Tim Jones and David and Danielle and Mike Pluff and how many is that? One, two, three, four, five. I'll make it six just to just so that we can then discuss. I just did. Okay. So you have Ginny, Tim Jones, Dave Moore, Danielle, and myself. Those uh, in the nay, please raise your hands. Chuck, Regina, Steve Henderson, and Brian Lapham and Sonny Kravitz. No, those were the nays. Six and five. Six, five. Six and five. So you have the nays are Regina, Chuck, Sonny, Steve Henderson, and uh, Brian Lapham. Yes, Sonny. If you recall the last meeting, anybody who voted against can ask for reconsideration. The in order to reconsider, it has to be. They have, it has to be made and seconded by somebody that voted in the affirmative, which in this case, both people voted in the affirmative. So we can reconsider this, okay? So having said that, Tim? I suppose it would be appropriate now for me to move Article 42. Can't hear you. Now? Now? Just does. Hello, Bill? Speak up. You don't need a microphone. Was that necessary? So I'll move uh, Article 42. Uh, in terms of our tally vote and how it's reflected on the warrant. Is there a second to that? I second it. Seconded by David Moy. Mr. Chairman, as you recall, there was a lot of discussion at our Tuesday night budget committee uh, meeting on the on this dam, also known as the Dam Dam. <laughs> and uh, as I pointed out and others who were initially reticent to vote in favor of this, This was the first time that it was presented to us as a flood control issue, a water management issue. And tonight, the advocates put it back onto the table as a beautification issue. And the flood control question seemed to like, well, it's very minimal. And I've received a number of communications from people who are not present here tonight chiding me for a variety of things. But one of those things was uh, the citation they made about the so-called Stevens report that was done in 2013 and the fact that I allowed my vote to be swayed without seeing the more recent engineering reports, which is why I was asking uh, for those reports. And you can see the response I got. Just turn your back on us and tell us, you know, believe what we say. You don't have a right to read the engineering reports, just do what we tell you to do kind of attitude. And I read the Stevens report, and the Stevens report from 2013, an engineering firm, I might add, indicated that the flood control uh, capacity of that dam was extremely minimal. And it did not accommodate even the so-called 100-year flood. It was only modulally covering the 50-year flood The culvert is well undersized to accommodate uh, water flows from either the 50 or 100 year flood. And it appears to me on reading that report that whether the dam is there or not, it's the culvert, that hole under the, under the road, 
that lets the water flow into Meadow Pond, the marshland, if you prefer. It's that hole, the size of that hole that really matters, not the existence or the beautification of the dam relative to flood control. And so that, for that reason, I, I, I have to, uh, and I thank the committee for allowing me the opportunity to reconsider, to uh, cast a negative vote on this. And I would encourage others to join me on this because, to me, we just keep throwing money after money after money on this and never seem to be getting anywhere. And even when we do with the existing plan, it's still not going to be adequate flood control. But culvert, it seems to be the key. And we're not addressing it at all. As you heard the DPW director, it's not even on the table. It was on the table years ago. But now it seems to be entirely, let's keep the beautiful pond for my backyard or front yard view. It's not adequate public policy thinking. It may be adequate for my neighborhood if I want to keep my pond and my pretty view. It's adequate for me personally, yes. But as good public policy, it ain't. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. You are certainly most welcome. Anybody else on this committee wishing to speak about this? Seeing none. <clears throat> this has been going around and around for a long time. Back in uh, the Warren article for 2014, there were actually two articles. Article 15 was to appropriate the $400,000 for the purpose of decommissioning. And Article 16 was there was 235000 for the purpose of replacing the culverts on High Street. And at the time, there was some money available um, from the state, and the article was contingent upon receiving that money. Um, I think, if I remember correctly, the... We didn't get it. Well, right. I, I think, if I remember correctly, that the warrant article... Uh, asking to replace the culverts was approved, but the money wasn't there. So, of course, being contingent upon getting that $147,500, it never happened. Um, but having looked into this and having been on this board all of the time that this thing has been going around and around, um, and back when we talked about it thoroughly in... Um, 2015 when the private petition from Norm Hurley and others um, wanted to repair the dam for $650,000 um, and the, the thing that was used to um, the in information we had at the time was the engineering study from the Stevens report and there were, I read this and I think that that was in 2013. Um, of course, now, with money having been spent um, nowadays in, a, in engineering done um, and an actual cost, um, this is a shovel-ready project. Uh, everything's ready to go. It's just a matter of getting that additional money um, from the from the uh, the place that Nam. Silberdick doesn't like, where was it, the un unexpended appropriations. Um, having said that, um, any, other, any other comments on this? Because if there are none, then we're going to, I'm going to ask for a vote. Um, this originally on Tuesday night passed. Um, it was eight in favor, one against, and one abstention. So at this time, I'm going to ask, we have a full board here. We have 11 members, and so we need six in order to, for this to pass, or six for it to fail. So at this time, those in favor of um, recommending this Warren Article 42, please raise your hands. I have Steve Henderson, Sonny Kravitz, Chuck Rage, Regina, not in favor any longer? Not oh. oh, okay. Uh, Mike Plouffe is in favor, Danielle, and Ginny. Does that make six, I believe? Sonny, you voted yes? Cool. So that's six. Okay, and I'll make it seven. So you have seven. It's, it's going to be seven. Those in, th 
those against this article, please? Tim Jones and David Moyer and Brian Lapham and any abstentions? Regina Regina is abstaining. Okay, so you have uh, Tim, David, and Brian that are in the nay. You had seven yeses and one abstention, Barbara. Okay, thank you very much. At this time, um, that takes care of the "Quote unquote flooding issues." So at this time, Mr. Chairman. Yes, sir. Um, I think that uh, we can assume that no one spoke on 22, and all of the responses on 20 were either favorable or not negative toward the substance of the article. So I assume there'll be no desire for reconsideration. So I move that we thank these wonderful people for coming in and telling us about the flooding issues. Uh, and raising it to the uh, the ballot, and uh, that we uh, let them know that we're bringing closure to this. So I move that articles 20, 22, and 42 be closed for further consideration for the evening. Do I have a second? Seconded by Regina. That these three warrant articles will not be reconsidered. That way, you people can go home and not worry about well, it changing. Okay. Yeah, so thank you. thank you very much. Uh, we're going to vote. Vote on that, please. Can we have a vote? Those in favor, and it's unanimous. Thank you very much for coming in. Okay, we support you. Okay. Um, at this time, okay. Thank you very. Thank you for coming in. Okay. Thank you for coming in. Okay. At this time, at 8:02. You're welcome. Bye now. At 8:02 p.m., we will. We will we will restart the public hearing for the town of Hampton's budget and petition mo money warrant articles. So now that we're back.